Super Rugby Friday games, folks. I'm not sure how much I remember of these games. <clears throat> I've been stuffed full of COVID since yesterday. Uh, thankfully, my wife and I got it about a week apart. So, yeah, when I was out for the count, she's looking after the kids. And when she was out early in the week, that was my job. Um, but, yeah, Blues and Highlanders, <clears throat> Rebels and Brumbies. We'll go over some of the key events that I can remember, some of the stats, and uh, after which I'm going to go have another lie down. But um, yeah, some entertaining rugby from what I remember, that's for sure. Blues and Highlanders, weird one. Like, the Blues are down 13-3 at halftime. Highlanders are pretty good in the first half. Blues distinctly average, eh? But whatever the Blues said at halftime, or whatever the Highlanders said, it had an absolute reversal of fortune, because we finished with 32 20 so the blues absolutely pile on the points in that second half whereas the uh the highlanders only managed the one try kind of you know five minutes from the end i should say though there's kind of still that heart and mouth territory as a blues fan because that's three weeks in a row with like five minutes to go the blues are in front and the team we're playing comes back into a position to take it so we've managed to to hold off twice now and uh and we ended up losing one. So it's not a habit they'll be wanting to make, um, you know, kind of a regular thing. I should say the Blues were also a bit affected by a few guys withdrawing with COVID cases. Speaking of COVID, um, prior to kickoff, like Bodie was out. So Peter Fetta had to step in at 10 and whatnot. And he had a pretty, he had a pretty bloody good shift. But um, yeah, um, as I mentioned, the uh, the game was put on the North Shore. It was at sunset. So there was a bit of... Um, Guys having to shield their eyes at times. It seemed like maybe that wasn't helping with some of the handling. Uh, Caleb Clark's got no real excuse for throwing a, a try away, man. Carrying the ball in one hand. It was pretty much a sure thing for a try, but ended up knocking it on because he didn't hold the ball close to his body. Um, the fend had already been made. The commentators gave him a fair bit of stick about it. Um, Highlanders got a penalty try through a mall, and Romano went to the bin. So, yeah, like I mentioned, halftime. 13-3, Highlanders have had 61% territory, 58% possession. The Blues have had to make 81 tackles to 47. The Blues have had 9 penalties conceded to 4. So it was looking like a pretty long day at the office. But second half, Plumtree gets a couple of tries, both down that right wing. One set up by Dalton, one set up by... Jeez, uh, who set up the other one? Was it Talia? Talia was pretty pretty bloody solid in this game as well. See, I've already forgotten half the game's... In my uh, feverish sleep that I had uh, last night, Zan Sullivan kicked a huge penalty. Uh, that guy's got a big old boot on him. So yeah, the Blues were actually up twenty to thirteen after after putting on um, putting on the points. Uh, Talia set up another one, which Heem ended up giving to Rico Iwania. Um, as I mentioned, the the Highlanders did come back with one through Frizzell, which was a bit too soft. Eh? He just kind of burst straight on through to make it game on twenty. Five points to 20 but um yeah the blues ended up scoring one through pitofeta at the death so yeah the game went like 90 minutes they played an extra 10 both sides chasing another try like the blues trying to get a bonus point try and the highlanders trying to get back within seven but neither side was able to get it done eventually it looked like clark had one eh? they um they said there was a high tackle in the build-up so yeah they um they chalked one off so yeah, no bonus point for either side, but as a Blues fan, I'm just pretty happy they came back in that second half. Um, and despite, despite the disruptions, they did all right. Run meters finished 519 to 278 to the Blues. Blues have more territory, 58%. Positions kind of even 48, 52 with the Highlanders edging up. But second half territory is 75, 25. So the Blues all over the Landers. Um, clean breaks is 8 to 4 to the Blues. Turnovers conceded is 17, 11 to the Blues. So a bit sloppy. Um, Blues tackling is 91%, which is massive. The Highlanders are 87, which is not bad. Both sides make a similar number of tackles, but boy, that penalty count, 18 to 8, with the Blues on the wrong side of the ref's whistle. So, yeah, Landers have still got a few things to work on. Their line out is pretty ordinary. Um, 12 from 17 for them. Um, certainly some bright spots. I feel a bit bad for Fakatava when he sits on the bench for like 70 odd minutes. Um, not going to help his development any, but that's the thing about having Aaron Smith there as well. So there's going to be games like that. Uh, Frizzell finishes with 19 from 22 tackles. He gets his try, 40 run meters and beats three defenders. Solid. Zan Sullivan, 87 run meters, five defenders beating that long penalty. Uh, Talia, like I mentioned, was everywhere. So 
happy days for the Blues. They came right in the end. They're away to the Crusaders next, which could be pretty hairy. Uh, the Highlanders are at home to Moana Pacifica. The Blues are 2-1. They're in 4th. The Highlanders are none from 4. They are in 10th. The other game was the Rebels and the Brumbies. 36 points to 17. The Brumbies never really looked like losing this one. Uh, the, the Rebels did manage to score a couple of nice tries, but the Brumbies just, at times, uh, ran riot. Um, it's a weird one, though, as well, because from what I remember, the Rebels were kind of knocking on the door for quite some time early on. Couldn't get any points, and then Rob Valtini, first chance <clears throat> the Brumbies get, he just storms over for a try. And then it's very similar with the Ikital one later. Like, the Brumbies would just go down the other end and score after being seemingly under the pump for a wee bit. So, yeah, it was 12 points to nil. The Rebels did manage to kind of stop the rot with um, a 12 a penalty to make it 12-3. Um, Vaihu got a, a yellow card for a clumsy challenge on Tom Banks in the air, but the Brumbies ended up getting was it three yellow cards in this game. They certainly got two uh, towards the end of the game. It finished 15-13. Um, but yeah, man, um, other tries for, for the Brumbies, Tom Wright got a couple out on the right wing. One of those, um, little dink throughs from Tom Banks just sat up for him perfectly. Um, Tom Banks got one of his own. Jerome Brown had a weird one where he just kind of burst through a mall and nobody was there to stop him. Uh, Elof got one for the Rebels and, um, Hardwick got one. He sold a dummy on Jesse Mogg to kind of get a bit of a consolation one. But yeah, ultimately... The Rebels, I mean, they were 17-3 down at halftime, and then 36-17 at full-time. So at least they managed to score a couple of tries in that second half, but it's still just not going right for them. I mentioned Nick White got a yellow card as well. So, yeah, 15 v 13 at the death, you would have thought the Rebels might have been able to score. Not to be. James Slipper put in a pretty sweet assist for the Tom Banks try. Um, he should have been a fly half, judging by that pass of his. But, yeah, just kind of another day at the office, eh, for the Brumbies for this one, and the Rebels... Windless run goes on. I mean, stats-wise, run meters 331 to 451. That's actually not too bad reading uh, for the Rebels. Um, turnovers conceded 14-12 is kind of tight. Clean breaks, though, 8-2 to two with the Brumbies having more um, tackling percentage. Like, the Brumbies are 89, 161 tackles. The Rebels, 71, man. Like, that's low by anyone's standards. So that's, that's a bit of a shocker. Penalties conceded 16-13 with the Brumbies having more. Yellow cards, 3-1. to one. Brumbies having more. So, um, yeah, Rebels probably could have done a bit better if their defense had held. Um, Banks, 158 run meters, three clean breaks, eight defenders beaten, a try and a two try assists. Man of the match, surely. Um, Ray Nuu has five defenders beaten, one clean break, and 50 run meters for the Rebels, but also four missed tackles. Like I said, the, the defense at times was pretty sloppy. Uh, Rebels are away to the Tars. They're none and four in 11th, and the Reds await the Brumbies. Uh, the Reds... Well, the Brumbies are 4 and 0. We're going to have to wait and see what happens with the Reds. But, um, yeah, like I said, it's all a bit of a blur, seeing as I was a bit uh, crook last night. But, um, yeah, just a bit knackered today. Had a wee nap. Probably going to have another one. Um, hope you guys are all doing good. I know there's been a lot of COVID cases around there. Dead. Gaz has got it, my old man. But he's doing good. Mum's got it. My kids have had it. My wife's had it. So. Yeah, fingers crossed once all these, at least in New Zealand, because we've still got the COVID restrictions. If you've noticed, the crowds are pretty small. Um, hopefully, once we get past this current wave, then we can actually get crowds back at the grounds. But anyway, if you guys have any thoughts, and I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.